we're opening doorways today. Good morning. And we're continuing with our series on, on body, mind, and spirit. And this month is spirit. We're all about spirit. Um, but I think before we jump into that, I should probably explain this. <laughs> because so, some of you know and some of you don't. Uh, and let me kind of back up a little bit because I first wanted to say how much uh, I appreciate your blessing my daughter uh, the week before last, uh, who was, you know, on her move and really moving into fulfilling her career in Los Angeles. And you were just all so kind to send her a blessing and just bless her on the way. Her, that doorway is open and she is moving through it and she's blessed on her way. So thank you for that. So as she, she's moved, and so my husband, Dana, and I moved out there with her, you know, accompanied her and helped her kind of get settled and uh, buy a car and get car insurance. You just can't imagine how expensive car insurance is in Los Angeles for someone under 25. <laughs> it's, uh, well, crazy. So um, she's moved to uh, Culver City, a place called Culver City, which is kind of, it didn't used to be nice, but it's kind of, you know, it's, and it's on the west side, and now they, there's uh, a, an ocean breeze, so it's a little cooler. And we have friends that live in Culver City. So we stayed with our friends, and she was really basically two, you know, two miles down the road as we were, you know, getting together and helping her do things. And I'm a runner, so I run every morning. Well, fast jog. I mean, a slow jog. <laughs> Somebody would say, you're just walking, but I, I'm trying to run. Anyway, so I, I, I go, they tell me, oh, go up to this hill. This is a beautiful hill where you can see forever. You can see the ocean. It's just fabulous. So I walk up this hill. Well, I walk up the hill. And and I turn around and just beautiful, the blue Pacific is there, Santa Monica, you know, uh, beautiful other hills around. And it's fabulous, right? It's so worth it. And then I run down the hill and I'm in the street. And so I think, you know, I got to hop up on the curb because, you know, it's not good. And I misjudged how high that curb was. And I must have hit that thing with my left foot with the full force of running down a hill. And, I, you know, I just tumbled and, you know, I was bleeding everywhere. And I, okay, I just, I, I had a little trouble getting myself back up, but I did. And I thought, okay, I can walk back to their condo. I'm sure I can. I've fallen before while I was running. I can do this. And I got up and then I realized, Oh no, this is definitely more painful than I've ever experienced before. Uh, but I really had no choice. So I kind of hobbled back to their place and I kind of collapsed just in, you know, and they're all there, you know, they're with band-aids and all kinds of things and, and a um, an ice well frozen peas, you know, for the for the foot and um, you know, to bring down the swelling. But I thought, oh, I think I need to get x-rays. And so my wonderful friend takes me to urgent care and we get the x-rays and the person there uh, says, oh, you've you know, three, you got three fractures in the uh, metatarsal bones and you're going to need a cast and don't put any weight on it at all. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and they gave me... Um, crutches. And they said, go to the, uh, the uh, orthopedist tonight. They'll put a cast on it and yada, yada. Uh, and it was after hours. They had no appointment. So uh, we went and then they looked at it and they said, no, no, you don't need a cast. This is the cast. I mean, which is great because you can take it off to take a shower, right? And, uh, and that you're supposed to walk on it. So completely different opinions about what I'm supposed to do but I'm trusting the specialist, right? I'll trust the specialist here. So here's the thing. Those of us on a spiritual path, particularly those of us in new thought, we know that life doesn't happen to us, right? We're not hapless victims of fate. Life happens through us. Life happens through us. 
that infinite divine life flows through our consciousness and into our experience and flows through all the filters in our consciousness. We talked about this last month when we were focusing on the mind, the filters of old false core beliefs, beliefs in separation, fearful, limited thinking, right? And it flows through those filters and is reflected in our experience. So the important thing here is to look at the possible lessons that might be available to us, the, the, the growth opportunities. As someone once said uh, recently to me, AFGO, have you heard this acronym for another fabulous growth opportunity? <laughs> You know, there could have been another word for that, but <laughs> another fabulous growth opportunity. Yeah. So, you know, and here's the thing. Years ago, in New Thought, years ago, people would be not quite compassionate about this. You know, and they would say things like, well, I wonder what was in your consciousness that attracted that to you. You know, thank God we're not there. We've evolved in thought and we're compassionate because it's really not about what, how we created the situation. It's about how we react to it when it's here, right? It's about what we can learn about ourselves. It, that's the point, what we can learn about ourselves and how we can expand our sense of humanity and divinity. So last week, um, uh, Barnsley Brown was here uh, speaking for me. It was really great to see her, right? And uh, one of the things that she talked about was this tool that we can use to find the growth opportunity within the challenge. And that is to ask the question, the reason I'm experiencing this is so that I can learn blank. And you fill in the blank. And she suggested, you know, you had 12 responses to that question. I know some of you have been working on this, right? I thought that was a really helpful idea. So I started working on that. Now, um, I haven't come up with 12 yet. Six. <laughs> and I thought I'd share them with you as a way to kind of stimulate your thinking about a challenge that you might have, you know, experience in life and ways that you can maybe begin to explore that. All right, so first and foremost, the number one lesson is to relax and receive. I'm learning to relax and receive, which is such a weird thing. I mean, honestly, to be honest with you, in my early 20s, I was all about receiving. All about receiving. I knew nothing about giving. I was all like me, me, me. You know, my motto was relax. The more relaxed you can be, the better. And then as I sort of moved through life and grew up and learned the blessings of giving, you know, I'm in this place where I, I think the, the, you know, it's tipping the scale in the opposite direction. So just need to, I need to bring it back into balance. All right. All right, the second thing is to slow down. <laughs> it's not easy to move fast with this thing. You gotta move slow. So I know that there are you know, some lessons for me in that and I'm uh, open to experiencing them. Uh, the third thing is to, oh, to examine how I identify myself. This, is, this one really hits me at a deep level because I think sometimes I, I, I've been identifying myself as strong and self-reliant, you know, which are good qualities, no doubt, good qualities, but it can be limiting. You know, for instance, it doesn't really allow in vulnerability, right, when we're so strong. So I'm beginning to discover that and, and opening up to that idea. The fourth thing is to learn to be patient with others who have disabilities. And I think this is, you know, I've always been compassionate, but patient, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's something that I need to learn. And, it, you know, it really became clear 
here when I had the, um, uh, the wheelchair pick me up at the airport coming back. I had a wheelchair from the door to the door of the plane and from the door of the plane to the, um, you know, to the door of the airport. Well, everybody traveling is in a hurry, right? And they begin to back up behind, you know, you, <laughs> it's all getting backed up behind you. And I know I've been in that position before too. And like, come on, come on, come on, move, move it on. But literally when you're in someone else's shoes, <laughs> you see that, you know, let's just all breathe and we're all gonna make it, right? We're all gonna get there. So patience, always a number one lesson for me. Um, oh, I, the fifth thing is I really appreciate my feet like never before. <laughs> oh my God. Have you ever seen an x-ray of a foot? It's really amazing that really these bones, they're really thin, kind of, beautiful and they're all connected together and with the toes and and it's just such an intricate design it's like who thought that up <laughs> god maybe <laughs> I really that's a divine idea and and you think about how much abuse your feet take through your life i know you know is it okay as a runner like how much pounding have i been giving these feet I just want to treat them a little more, oh, with a little, just, just a little more love, right? And then the last thing is to really understand the value of and to appreciate this spiritual community. And I want to talk about that a little bit because what we have here, I think, is pretty special. And it's not just because I'm the minister. I mean, we all have access to the same kind of support. So first of all, when this first happened, I called the prayer team and the prayer team are immediately on it. They are on the case and they are so incredibly powerful and compassionate and loving. I saw some of the prayers that came through. They're just so beautiful and powerful. I mean, really, I, like after three or four days, I really basically have no pain at all, which is pretty amazing, I think. And uh, because I'm also on the prayer team, I see that everyone's, they treat everyone's prayer request in exactly the same, with the same amount of devotion and love and commitment. Um, we are blessed to have this UCP prayer team available to us. Honestly, and we'll, we'll get to experience more of that this Thursday. We'll talk more about it for World Day of Prayer. Uh, the second thing is the We've Got Your Back team called me up and said, what do you need? We're here for you. What, what can we do? And, uh, and this so on practical support, right? And if, if my husband wasn't at home, uh, which I have been asking, oh, honey, can you get me that? Can you give me that? <laughs> can you bring me this? Um, you know, then uh, I would have said yes, right? And then somebody called me three days later and said, you sure? You know what I mean? So I know some of you have benefited from the We've Got Your Back team. And, and some of you watching uh, on the live stream, I know have benefited from the We've Got Your Back team. So um, it's, it's just such a beautiful way to be supported. The dedication and the love and the commitment to being a loving service in the world is just beautiful. The other thing is that, um, so I knew that I needed a replacement for me for last Sunday. I asked three people, you know, if they would uh, speak for me. All three said yes. And uh, I know, and I went with Barnsley because she hadn't spoken here for a long time, which she made clear last Sunday. <laughs> and uh, so again, it's just this willingness. This community is just, there's such a willingness here to step up and help and say yes. So the level of support that is available to all of us in this spiritual community is inspiring and so, so valuable. You know, studies have been done that people who belong to a spiritual community, and it doesn't matter what kind, and across the board, live longer, they're healthier, they uh, recover from illness faster, they have better relationships, and they're happier in general. 
Studies have been done that absolutely prove that for people who are members of a spiritual community as opposed to people who are not. So that's a doorway. That's an open doorway. You know, we just need to walk through. And I think that even, well, you know, I'm biased, but I think this community is special because not only do we have all the support that I just mentioned, but on a deeper level, we are here to help each other awaken, to stay awake to the truth that there is a power and a presence of love that is everywhere present, that is within everything, that is within us, and we can access it at any moment. We're here to support each other in connecting with that highest spiritual self and to come from our highest spiritual self more often. To help, we're here to remind each other and to support each other in this because we all know we're living in a world that is very seductive. You know, oh, there's a world that is asleep and dreaming a dream of separation that we're separate from our source, that we're separate from each other, that we're separate from our good, this illusion of being a victim of the world, asleep and dreaming. So we must, we must come together to support each other in staying awake. Awake to who we truly are. That, that infinite divine one we're expressions of it. That each of us is a beautiful emanation of divine light. That same one divine light. The world's not going to tell you that. That's why we have to come and remind each other to stay awake. You know, ultimately, ultimately, we are participating in the great awakening, the awakening to oneness. As we awaken ourselves to oneness, to the true spiritual nature of who we are, we're more empowered to help others awaken. You know, Maya Angelou once said, uh, hatred has caused a lot of problems, <laughs> but it hasn't solved one yet which is a simple but powerful statement. But love has solved problems. Compassion has solved problems, right? When we are aware of the divinity within the other person, we cannot hate them. We cannot uh, uh, wish them you know, ill. We can't screw them over. We can't not, not want the best for them. So when we realize beyond a shadow of a doubt our oneness, when we've had the experience of our spiritual self, and that's what we're talking about here, the experience, not a concept. You know, we can all get together and talk about a concept of spirit. And maybe, you know, that can be helpful than opening a door uh, into the experience, but the experience is what we're after, right? The experience of our spiritual self. Once we've had that experience of our spiritual self, that's the gold, right? That's the open doorway. And then we kind of radiate out that awareness. So Joel Goldsmith, um, who is a New Thought writer, um, he says in his book, Living by Grace, every bit of spiritual light that you individually attain increases the amount of Christ consciousness that is loosed on the world. Increases the amount of Christ consciousness or divine consciousness, awakened consciousness in the world. So that's the ultimate mission here of Unity Center of Peace, really. I mean, first, yes, we come together and we learn 
and we have the experience and we open to oneness and we open to the truth and have that experience of that spiritual reality of who we are so that our lives may take on the joy and the, the peace, the love that is already present so that we may learn to manifest more peace, more prosperity, more well-being. And then as we embody, as we embody that awareness, it radiates out. That light radiates out, just naturally. The light that lighteth up the world. Consciousness, it's consciousness that expands. Consciousness grows. Love spreads. So that's what we're participating in here. That's what we come together to participate in. And we're going to do it in a really focused way on Thursday, which is Unity's World Day of Prayer. And, and uh, Pat will tell you more about it in just a little bit. Uh, but that's the whole idea. So this month, we're entering something that we call stewardship season. We're calling stewardship season. It used to be... You know, with this time of year, we would do something called pledge drive. Ugh. <laughs> Who wants another pledge drive? That's old consciousness. We're growing, right? We're expanding our consciousness. We're thinking about it differently. And we're thinking about taking time to focus on and reflect on what this means to us, right? What, the, what we value here for ourselves and for others. So you may have received, and forgive me for those of you who've walked in today new, <laughs> you, you may have received by, right now uh, a letter from me. If not, it's, it's going to be coming in the mail, so look for that. It's like a little packet that explains a little bit more about this, and we'll be talking about it more in the, the coming weeks about what this is. But in the meantime, you know, just, I ask you to just take some time, carve some time out of your day and just reflect on, you know, the meaning of your spiritual growth, what that means to you, how you value your own spiritual growth, what that can mean for you in your life and how maybe we can radiate that out to the world. Yes? You with me? Yay. All right. Namaste.